I'm gonna finish this up for you people. Anyways, let's get started. We're left in off where we were on uh, Eagle Fender, 1933. Um, Released in 1933, I believe. Peanut Vendor might just be the first stop motion film that freaked kids and stop motion. And with only a minute and a half okay. runtime, let's see. That's we're, pretty okay, impressive. let's see how it's disturbing yet. The story is well, what in the hell is, is no that thing? It features a monkey by the seaside. Oh, god! Oh, the following video is controversial and may be offensive to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my name is Carl. Oh, good. Oh, my God. There really isn't much else to the setup. Oh, my God. The disturbing thing. Kill it. Kill it with fire, please. And his design and movements. Oh, my God. Like most stop motion films. Oh, so bad. This isn't always a bad thing. Yeah, not Christmas. Sometimes uh, Samurai God and Bimbo. No, not Bimbo. Uh, that this dog be dude. This the same for the monkey. Except its design is... Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, kill it. Kill it, please. That is not a monkey. That is an abomination on this world. Its arms are as long as... Oh, God. And it just looks oh my wrong. god. When stretched out to that oh place. my god. Our main character then breaks out. Oh the god. Albeit kill it. One. Please, someone and give me a gun so I can kill this thing. Oh. Before it seamlessly merges back with this body. The music cuts out from time to time. Oh my god. Silence, oh my god, stay. kill it. Kill it, Make please. It feel like an eternity. Ah. The film was created by Len Lai, huh. a New Zealand I artist. I think I've heard about that guy. Experimental films and kinetic sculpture. His strange and exotic work. Oh was my God! And his films and sculptures went on That's to amazing. be featured in galleries all across the world, from the British Film Institute to the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. The monkey itself is currently oh, owned we by the go kill that thing now. Archive. Come on, uh, we gotta go blood up a wally. All in all, the peanut vendor is a harmless short film. It is this not, it's an abomination on this earth. The monkey, however, is also pretty terrible. We gotta kill that thing with fire. We gotta burn that thing. Anyways, number three. The tale of the priest and of his workman, Balda, 1930s. Uh, what? Our next entry also qualifies as lost media, as only four minutes of this film have been found and restored. Okay. The Tale of the Priest and of His Workman Balda is a Soviet feature film that was worked on throughout is the 1930s. Is that the priest right there with the beard? Work on it began in 1933 with Mikhail Sekhanovsky leading the project, basing enough of the fairy tale of the same name by Alexander Pushkin. <laughs> Pushkin. <laughs> Difficulties arose during production, partially thanks to the composer of the film leaving the project after publicly denouncing oh God, who are these work in an article. People. Due to not having a score oh, as well as other production troubles, the film was never completed and was put into storage at the Len Film Archives, where it was almost lost in a fire during World War II. Well, thank God it was retrieved. The only surviving footage is from the scene Bazaar. The fairy tale itself was about a lazy priest looking for a cheap worker in the bazaar. The priest? He meets Balda, a simple-minded fellow who agrees to work for a year with no pay, with the exception that he be allowed to hit the priest on the head three times, Ooh, as well as I have cooked spell for food, scary. a common wheat staple food in parts of Europe during the Bronze Age. Huh. The priest soon realizes that Balda is an exceptional worker, as well as incredibly strong. Oh, thank God, he's he gets not. worried and soon begins to ask Balda to complete impossible tasks, including gathering fabric from a sea devil. At the end of the story, Balda gives the Ooh. priest three consecutive blows upon the head, causing him to lose his mind. Balda delivers the final line, saying, You shouldn't have gone rushing off after cheapness. <laughs> the surviving footage from the film version shows the beginning of the. So, wait, uh, Balda. So wait, this is of a, like a year, so Balda, so each day Balda has to give the priest three hits on the head, three times each day after his shift is over, so uh, is that it? Question mark. The story, with the various shopkeepers of the bazaar off-selling their wares. We gotta kill them. We see many close-ups of these shopkeepers showcasing their... <laughs> these are both aliens and monstrosities. Their limited movement, except...
exaggerated features and bombastic behavior makes for an uncomfortably long four minutes, making it feel almost double its runtime. Kill it. It's oh god, oh god, that, that man, oh god, that man's way, naked, get out of here. This is how they plan on opening the film. Well, it's unfortunate that the project was never completed and the remaining footage went missing, not everything about this is a loss. After the death of the film's composer, I have his it. wife arranged for one of his students to have the rest, have of, the rest of this the film completed, which in my storage. <laughs> Philharmonic Orchestra no, in guys, for real, I have this movie. I actually kind of created the. Uh, no, I don't think I'm kidding. I I actually am. Camera film. Man's Revenge. Not in real life, but my cartoon character, Camera's Revenge. The Cameraman's Revenge was produced in 1912 by the Corn. Oh, Zonko Jesus, that's a pretty long time ago. <laughs> focuses on Mr. and Mrs. Beetle and their failing marriage. Mr. and Mrs. Beetle? The entire the film is silent. Pray to God that this is not anime on steroids. <laughs> actual dead oh, God. To wines, with their limbs sealed in wax. Many people were so amazed and convinced by this effect. So they're basically they gonna the go get divorced? Ladislas Starovich had trained live bugs to perform. Mr. Beetle has become unhappy with his marriage, finding their love life has become rather boring. Wow. One night he heads to the gay dragonfly nightclub. The gay to meet his drag gay dragonfly. Well, okay. After beating her boyfriend, oh my. Mr. Beetle takes the dancer to a hotel where they have sex. Oh my God. Why would you do that? Beat her boyfriend. Who follows them to their hotel. Be her boyfriend so you can be so her. So, uh, Mrs. Beetle herself is also in the middle of an affair with her artist friend. When Mr. Beetle returns home to find her in the middle of the affair, he throws the artist out in a rage. Wow. He forgives her, however. Mrs. Beetle is generous. He forgives his wife. He takes her to a movie. The two go out to see a movie. Not knowing that the theater they go to is the very same one that the dancer's boyfriend works at. After seeing the Beatles arrive, the cameraman enacts his revenge and plays the film of Mr. Beatle having sex with the dancer. Oh my the god. Everyone to see, humiliating the couple publicly. Mrs. Beatle begins beating Mr. Beatle. You can see her right there. Like, yeah. Enraged, yeah. Mr. Beatle runs up to the projection room and tackles the cameraman. Causing the projector to catch on fire. The couple is arrested and thrown into jail, where they reconcile and spend the night together in the cell. The end. And over a century old, Cameraman's Revenge is Starovich's most famous film. It combines his two loves. This is clearly a film aimed at adults, because children would just get this disturbing. Which were very popular in Russia at the time. Yeah. The way that dead insects are utilized is brilliant, if not a bit macabre. The delicate techniques used to carefully move each bug's limb. I'm gonna snap my fingers and then they're gonna die. It's incredibly impressive. Especially given the fact that this was made. There we go, like, I snapped them away for you guys. It is clearly a film aimed at adults, as many of the themes and jokes would fly over children's heads, as well as most likely frighten them. Due to the use of stop motion bug corpses, the attention to detail. <gasps> Why would you put the gust? Macabre themes. Oh god, he, he killed himself. That man just put himself in the fire. Alright. Alright, number one. I. The mascot. The mascot, 1933. Our final and longest film is another stop motion animation okay. titled The Mascot. Clocking in at 25 minutes, it's incredibly impressive that such a long and high-quality stop-motion film was produced in 1933. Created by French filmmaker Ladisol Starwitz, the mascot was actually one of the first animated feature films ever created, preceding Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Mm. The film is actually incredibly similar to Toy Story, or rather, what? Toy Story is similar to it. Yeah. The premise features toys coming to life when humans aren't looking. The main character is a toy dog named Duffy. Brought to life by a tear from looks pretty disturbing. <laughs> this gives the a level of loyalty and sentiment that isn't present in any other of the living inanimate objects that are met throughout the film. Mm. Given the fact that it's early stop motion, there is a certain degree of Did that woman just dab? a good amount of it actually. 
The amount of material used in this film is impressive, if not a bit disturbing. Mm. From vegetables and broken glass to chicken bones and dead chicks half born in their shell, mm. Sarwitz utilized everything at his disposal. <laughs> Pixar was incredibly inspired by this film, showcased in Toy Story and A Bug's Life, with viewing the world from a smaller perspective. While Pixar usually takes a much more lighthearted and whimsical approach to these perspectives, the mascot is not. For example, in Toy Story 2, there is a scene where the toys travel under an orange traffic cone in order to cross the street. While traffic is a mundane situation for us, we can feel the anxiety and tense atmosphere from their perspective, albeit in a comical fashion. A similar situation occurs in the mascot, where we can see the dangers of the city from a toy's perspective. Wow. But the reality of it is much more present. One moment in particular shows a clown doll having his head amputated by the wheel of a car. It never gets reattached, and we see the rest of the body crumble away. The nature of stop motion, added with the realistic approach to a smaller perspective of the world, makes this film deep, precise, and unnerving. Many credit Star Wars as the key figure in the development of stop motion film, and after seeing the mascot, it's very clear why. Utilizing the surreal nature of stop motion to their full potential, he realized the power of stop motion very early on, and paved the way for many future creators including The Nightmare Before Christmas's Henry Selick. Disturbing isn't always a bad thing. Sometimes it's the anxiety and fear that truly makes us feel alive. That's it. <laughs> Probably the most disturbing one is The Tale of the Priest. <laughs> we gotta end that monkey. Definitely the monkey. Anyways, I shall talk to you guys later if you had any video suggestions. I'll see you in the next video.